Now this tutorial is actually a piggyback off of our last drop shadow tutorial. If you took the last drop shadow tutorial, you'll remember that this image was the final one we came up with. You know, the one with the great looking drop shadow. The only problem with this is, what if you wanted to use this image in a presentation that had a background of a different color? And here's what I mean. I went ahead and created a PowerPoint project and I made the background um, kind of a light brownish and if you look I went ahead and saved out our image and imported it in here if you look you see this has the drop shadow but it also has this white background around it which looks awkward you don't want that you want your images to blend into your background so how do you do that and here is the trick what you need to do is whatever presentation you have I'm gonna go ahead and do it for this one I'm gonna take a screenshot which usually in uh, if you're using a Windows based computer it's just print screen go back into Adobe Photoshop go to file new it already has uh, your dimensions set for you click OK edit paste and you'll see that it brought in this screenshot so what you need to do you need to get this color right here so basically you need to sample it um, and if you click here, this is the eyedropper tool. This is how you sample something. You go anywhere on the screen and you click and it automatically samples that color. And you'll see it sampled the color right down here. So now that we have this color sample, we can reduce this. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to go ahead and hide this layer. And you notice right here the background has a lock on it. That means you're not able to do anything to it. But if you just simply double click it, you, don't, you can name the layer, you don't have to, I usually don't, just for makes it faster, click OK. Now you can manipulate this layer. And so you see you still have that color in your palette. So if you go up here to your paint bucket tool, go ahead and paste that color in there, turn your layer back on, boom, there you go. And if you go to File, Save for Web, then you have your background. And let me go back in, and I also saved this out, so let's go ahead and insert this background. And there you go. Look at that. Doesn't that look so much better without that white? And that's how you do it. Now, there is a trick, another little trick. If you're in Photoshop, now, a lot of times, most, and now PowerPoint does, and, and a lot of other programs do, they accept PNG files. So, if you'll notice here, you have a selection for a PNG 8 or a PNG 24. Now PNGs allow you to have a transparent background so if you were to turn this background off and then you notice there's no color it's just a checkerboard. Go to file, save for web. Now of course now why is there a white background? Because a GIF or a JPEG always have some kind of colored background but if you were to save this as a PNG there you go and you can import that in um, to any presentation that actually takes PNGs and I wanted to show you both ways just because um, you never know what kind of software you're using um, you could be using a software that doesn't accept PNGs and it used to be maybe three or four years ago a lot of softwares didn't accept them but now most of them do but just in case I wanted to show you this method also just so you could have uh, an alternate uh, way of uh, producing your images